Section 11C talks about legal costs. It says, for the purpose of the... So, Section 11.1 over there, the start of it, basically, as the preamble says, for the purpose of determining the taxable income derived from any person from carrying on any trade, there shall be allowed as deductions from the income of such a person so derived. And then it goes, any legal expenses. All right, so again, you must be carrying on a trade. This is the preamble. So it says, you may deduct any legal expenses... And then they explain to us what that is. It says, being fees for the services of legal practitioners, so like lawyers, expenses incurred in procuring evidence or expert advice, court fees, witness fees and expenses, taxing fees, the fees and expenses of sheriffs or messengers of courts and other expenses of litigation, which are of an essentially similar nature to any of the set fees or expenses. So they're basically saying, things, any cost incurred that has to do with legal practitioners and the courts and laws and then they tell you it must be actually incurred by the taxpayer during the year of assessment I'm giving you all the key factors here in respect of any claim dispute or action at law arising in the course of or by reason of the ordinary operations undertaken by him in the carrying on of his trade Provided, I always do a little whole block there, provided that the amount to be allowed on this paragraph in respect of any expenses shall be limited to so much thereof as is not capital in nature and is not incurred in respect of any claim made against a taxpayer for the payment of damages or compensation if by reason of the nature of the claim or the circumstances any payment which is or might be made in satisfaction or settlement of the claim does not or would not rank for deduction from his income under paragraph A. Right. And paragraph A is section 11A, which is the general deduction formula. Okay. So, I'll explain in a second more what that means. It is not incurred in respect of any claim made by the taxpayer for the payment to him of any amount which does not or would not constitute income. And it is not incurred in respect of any dispute or action at law relating to any such claims as referred to in paragraphs 2 or 3. Okay, so let's quickly talk about it. So it says, you can deduct legal expenses, and we know now what legal expenses are. Things for the lawyers, for the court, for witnesses or the sheriff's right, which you've actually incurred. So it's the same principle to understand of actually incurred. It means you must be unconditionally liable for it. During the year of assessment, we know what that means. In respect of any claim, dispute, or action at law. So it must be in respect of a claim, dispute, or an action at law. So for example, if I just contact my lawyer to give, get advice from them on something. So there's no action. I say to my lawyer, listen, I'm thinking of expanding my business into this. I just want to get some advice from you. That will not be legal cost under Section 11C because there's no claim, dispute, or law action there. I'll have to consider that under something like the general deduction formula. Okay, so there must be some sort of law action, court case type of thing happening. And it must be in the course of ordinary operations. Now, this ordinary operations here is will apply the Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway case principle to it. That is what they said, is it in the production of income? Right. We be asked, what action gave rise to this? And is this related to the income earning operations? It's the same type of concept we're looking at. It must be to do with your ordinary business. Right. Then, it must not be capital in nature. So, for example, if um, someone is... Let's say there's an infringement on my name. So, I've got a business... My name is Red Bull, um, and now a new competitor comes and makes an energy drink called Red Bull Pen. Okay, like a bull pen. Now, I have to go to court. I have an action at law there, a dispute. So I incur all these legal costs, but it's about my name. It's, I'm fighting, if you think about the, the business, and I'm fighting for the income earning operations or income earning structure, structure, capital. Right, so that dispute is capital in nature. Can't claim a deduction for it here. Then two and three, this is very important, and this has to do with this ordinary operations thing, and this Port Elizabeth Electric Tramway case. They say, I can't claim the legal cost if 
The first one is for payment of damages. That's number two. And number three is in respect of income. Okay, so the same principle applies here. The first one is if you pay damages and those damages would not be allowed as a deduction. And if you receive income and it's not allowed as a deduction. So, for example, let me explain to you quickly. Let's say I was negligent. Remember, if you are negligent as a taxpayer, you can't claim a deduction. It's not in the production of income per the Joffe case, for the Lisbon Electric Tramway case, and the Joffe case. It's not an inevitable concomitant, that whole story. Right. So if you're negligent, you do not get a deduction for something. So let's say um, I have that whole story where I have a bus. My company has bus drivers. This guy's drunk. I know he is drunk. So I, as a taxpayer, I know it, but I still allow him to go out. So I was negligent. He's involved in an accident. People are injured. People pass away. I'm forced to pay damages to the family of 10 million rands. And I incur legal costs for my lawyer of 50,000 rands, let's say, to fight this. Now, because I was negligent, I will not be allowed to claim the damages as a deduction. I will also then not be allowed to claim the legal costs. Let's say I was not negligent, and this is ordinary operations. So the guy was not drunk, the bus driver. He was just involved in an accident. It happens, and unfortunately, people were injured and people die. I'm forced to pay damages, but because it's in the production of income, I'm allowed to claim it. I can then claim the legal costs as well. So the legal cost follows the expense. The same thing happens with income. Okay, so let's say I'm Red Bull, and we saw now there's this Red Bull pen. They're infringing on my name. So Red Bull takes Red Bull pen to court. Red Bull wins. So they win, win income of 10 million rands, but they had to incur legal fees, obviously, for the lawyer in court. I'm going to just say the same amount, 50,000, to fight for that. Now, this income, is it capital nature? Is it in the scheme of profit making? No, it's to fight for your name, it's to fight for the structure, it's fighting for the tree, not the fruit. So that's gross, it's not gross income, it's capital nature. Then the legal costs also will be capital nature, not allow as a deduction. Okay? Second one, now it is, uh, these guys, Red Bull Pen, they copied my product, and the courts say they are forced to pay me for all of the money that they made selling the product and I have to discontinue it. Assume just for this, I get income and it is allowed as income because it relates to my income earning operations. I will allow you to claim the legal cost then. So they fo the, in the legal cost follows the income or the expense, okay, which is what we just discussed over here.